Hi, we Roberto Diaz, matchmaker of Golden Boy. So how are you feeling, man? I'm excited, I'm happy. Um, just two days away and ready to see for the fans, for boxing, one of the best fights to close out the year. As the matchmaker for Golden Boy, how easy was it for you to allow, you know, this fight to take place from a matchmaker standpoint? Obviously, did, was there a threat, in your opinion, for JoJo? You know, when you work with certain fighters like JoJo Diaz, it's easy. It's easy because he's always raising his hand to fight where uh, uh, these fighters, these challenges that a lot of others don't want to fight. And he showed it in the past. When he was WBC number one uh, rated ch uh, challenger, he was also the WBO rated ch number one. So he could have taken an easier route going the WBO. He said, no, I want Gary Russell. He's the best in the division. Fortuna didn't have an opponent. Jojo raised his hand, said, I'll fight him. Ryan didn't have an opponent. He raised his hand. When Ryan got injured and pulled out, Devin Haney came up. He said, yes, absolutely, because he was next in line anyway. So it's very easy to work as a matchmaker with somebody like Jojo because he's willing to take these challenges. Again, from your shoes, do you see any similarities in Devin, Tevin, and Gary? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the speed, the 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 slick boxing. Uh, by all means, I want the people to know that we know Devin is very, very talented. He's a gifted athlete. He surprised me in the Linares fight because he showed savviness as well, which you need to have years of experience, go through certain fights to pick that up, yet he already had that. So there's tremendous respect for him. Gary Russell had more experience than he did. Jojo didn't have the experience at the time. I think Jojo today matches up much better because he has experience. He's been through fire. He's fought with a broken hand. He's fought with a very nasty cut. And he's shown that that doesn't bother him. We haven't seen that with Devin. We will see that Saturday night. Uh, for JoJo, is now the right time because of the Cambosos? Would Devin and Team Haney be thinking maybe that JoJo's more of a dog now, has more of a possibility because the upset happened with Tio? Maybe that's on the front of their mind, or do you think at this level I don't that think doesn't come up? No, I don't think I don't think that's really in Devin's mind. I think Devin might be more of a disappointed that the Teofimo fight maybe didn't you know materialize because of his loss that might be playing but i do think that devin was overlooking jojo from the get-go because he was already thinking in teofimo so eh, we'll see saturday night how how crucial that is again uh with your experience uh, jojo started at 22. how safe to say is it that he's a full-fledged 135 pounder or can people still consider him the smaller man moving up and should the pressure be on Haney for a stoppage or a knockdown? I don't think there should be a, st a pressure on Haney. A win is a win. Um, Jojo's never been dropped, never been really hurt, stunned in a fight. His chin speaks for himself. He started at 22, moved up to 30. The Fortuna fight was going to be a one-off, and then he was going to come back. But he looked good. He, he, looked, a, uh, he looked good. He looked strong. One or two more fights, I think if he would have had a couple fights at 35, he would have even stopped Fortuna. Today, what I see in Jojo, uh, his upper body, his legs, yet he's not depleting, he's eating uh, to make weight, but he's strong and fast, and that's what I like. Whereas Devin's a big 35, struggling to make weight. He's ready to move to 140. Is it one fight too too long at 35? We saw it with Teofimo. We might see it again on Saturday. Obviously, with what happened last week, I don't want you to count your chickens before any eggs hatch, but uh, would JoJo and Golden Boy be willing to go to Australia if uh, he gets past this fight and the Cambosos fight materializes? The Bella and Cambosos have been promoting that they've lifted, they've done the heavy lifting and they want to go back to Australia and fight in front of maybe 60, 70, or 80,000 people. Does that sound appealing for Golden Boy? Absolutely. First things first, like you said, Saturday night, it's a big fight. It's a big, uh, it's an important fight for his career, for us at Golden Boy. But Camboso should do that. He should go and give his fans, give his country, give him, have that opportunity to fight in Australia. Who knows? First things first, Saturday night. But after, we'll sit down with Team Diaz. And if that's the fight, 
that makes more sense. Australia, I mean, he's shown, he's, he went to uh, Gary's backyard. Jojo's a dog, and that's what people gotta remember. They see the smile, they see, Jojo's a dog. He's willing to fight anybody. He's a throwback from the fighters of the past. He wants legacy, he's not worried about that zero. And I think, uh, let's see after Saturday night, then we can sit down and talk. Two things off topic. If you can just clear up, uh, it, it, it seems like it was heavily reported that Zurdo signed his side of the contract to face uh, uh, Dimitri Bivol. Is that true as far as you know? Was there a contract? Did he really sign? And, and, and why did that fight fall apart with Bivol? The fight's been worked on for as long as I can remember. We've been going back and forth with Team Bivol. It's a fight that both sides want, wanted. We were ready for December 18th, sent out a contract to Team Bivol. Everything was going back and forth. I mean, we, we, we negotiated back and forth a little bit, contract was sent. And yes, in the last moment, they decided there was another opportunity for them in Russia. We respect that. Uh, but it did throw us off because it was ninth inning and then this came about. Otherwise, we would be seeing Surdo Ramirez and Dimitri Bivol December 18th rather than Unesco Gonzalez. Okay, and the last one I would like you to clear up. Is Jamal, Jamal Charlo a difficult person to, 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 to negotiate with? Or uh, was there never an offer sent? Because uh, there seems to be discrepancy on whether or not he received an offer from Canelo. His brother says he got one. There's interviews with you on Hispanics causing panic saying he got one. He says he never got one. Has Golden Boy ever sent an offer for Charlo Canelo? Remember, at Golden Boy, we don't go straight to the fighter. He had his team at the time. And I won't say he was difficult because we worked with them for many years from the beginning of the career. Never had difficulties. But at the time when he was a potential opponent, an offer was made to his side and it was rejected. Are you at liberty to say who? Is it a Louis the Cubas? Anyone specific that you can... Um, Eric, spoke, Eric spoke to Al directly. Okay. Yeah. Um, and with that in mind, knowing that you've dealt with Al and tried to get a Jamal Charlo fight, how realistic is that Andre? I know you don't have any parts in Andre, but I mean, from a fight fan standpoint, do you see Andre Charlo ever happening? I think there was a, an opportunity for it to happen. I believe it should happen. You know, every, today everybody wants to fight Canelo. Everybody wants that lottery ticket. Everybody wants to, you know, the payday. I think what needs to be done is Charlo, Andre, uh, like four of them face off. And you know what? The last man standing, then he is deserving of those big fights, of the lottery ticket. But first, let's give the boxing. I mean, don't keep fighting the smaller fights just to prolong and, and become maybe an opponent one day. I know he's behind me, so the last thing is, uh, Demetrius Andre, Eddie Hearn just said he would rather move up and activate the WBO clause challenging Canelo at WBO 168 versus fighting the top rank John Beck, I won't kill his last name. In Andre's peculiar position, would you recommend, if you were part of his team, to vacate a title at this point in his career? Yeah, he did it at 54, he do it at 60. I mean, you gotta go looking for the big fights. And again, I'm, I'm saying the big fights, of course, it is Canelo, but it's also the big payday. Um, but again, they have to be willing to say Benavides and Charlo and Andre and do a box off. And you know what? The winner now deserves, not that it, I want the payday, he deserves that payday once they beat each other. All right, thank you so much.